Hey everybody, welcome back to another Motivation Monday podcast for Monday, February 11th, 2019. As always, we hope you had a great weekend full of awesome music making, practicing, thinking about music, whatever you're doing, and this podcast is designed to get you off on the right foot for the week with hopefully some words of wisdom from uh, one of my favorite musicians this week. So what I'm going to start doing over the next couple of weeks is I'd like to present a series to you where I dig through all of my favorite interviews with my favorite artists, and maybe we pull out a quote or two, and we base our Motivation Monday episode off of that quote and some of the motivation from somebody who is just amazing and doing amazing things in music. So this week, I want to talk about an interview I was reading with Chris Potter. I will make sure that I put the interview in the show notes if you'd like to check out the whole thing. But the interview is asking about Chris Potter's composition uh, process. And he asked Chris, do your compositions have a signature that is inherently your own? And Chris says a lot of stuff. And, and then he gets to this point where he says, writing can be a difficult process. It's an emotional digging up. You really have to go for what feels true. It is possible for me to write any kind of tune at any time. I can sit down and technically write something. But to write something that I feel really does resonate with experience and is really what I mean to say, those don't happen every day. Sometimes they just seem to fall off the tree when they're ready. There's great moments when you think of an idea and the tune is done in five minutes. Those are often really good tunes, but you can't forge that. You just have to sort of wait for it. So that's a really interesting thought in my mind. And it doesn't just apply to composition, I feel like. It can really apply to our time spent in the practice room, maybe even more so than composition. So one thing that we do is we spend a lot of time in the practice room actually figuring out how to go about developing our own voice, if that makes any sense. But when we're developing our own voice, what it does is it requires a lot of trial and error, right? So you may set out to work on something and you may get a week of like really, really hard work in on this exercise. And then after that week, you realize you know what, this exercise is just not fitting with my personal voice, what I ultimately want to sound like on my instrument. What I'm actually trying to say has nothing to do with this exercise. So you may have been recommended whatever this thing is that you're working on from an awesome musician or an awesome teacher. Um, you may have stolen it from a solo that you thought was totally awesome, and then as you start working on it, you're like, uh, you know what, this isn't really me. And that's really frustrating because you've just devoted a week of your time to working on this, and now you just kind of kind of chuck it in the trash can. But this is all part of the process. You need to work on a bunch of stuff that is not ultimately going to make it into your playing and is actually going to kind of waste your time a little bit before you can get to the gold right? And I have so many weeks like this where I'm practicing, practicing, practicing something and I just can't get it into my playing because it's not natural for me. It's not what I'm actually trying to say on the instrument or trying to say in my solos. And I have to ultimately just get rid of it or kind of forget about it. But then there are other times in the practice room where I'll just be like kind of messing around on the instrument and I'll come up with this amazing exercise that I wasn't even honestly trying to come up with. And those are the times that make all this, uh, these hours that we spend in the practice room and these hours that we spend with our instrument worth it. And it's like Chris says, sometimes it just kind of falls off the tree and into your lap. And those are the exercises and the times and the concepts that are going to be the most beneficial to your playing, but it requires that hard work of being, you know, sitting under the tree, waiting for it to fall off every day. And some days you're gonna sit out there all day and nothing is gonna fall off that tree. But it's the point of going out and sitting under that tree every single day and waiting for that perfectly awesome thing to fall off the tree and into your lap. 
So if you're frustrated in the practice room, if you feel like, geez, I haven't come up with something in a bunch of weeks that really, really I can get very excited about, just stay at it and you will eventually find something that you can be very excited about, something that will make it into your playing, honestly, without you even having to try, because it's such a cool sounding idea. It's such a cool sounding exercise. It's such a great tune that you wrote that you're not going to be able to help but just play it all the time, and it will seamlessly just work your way under your fingers, onto your instrument, into your brain. So hopefully that helps. Jazz is a lot of frustration, and then these intense moments of epiphany or intense moments of getting the payoff from all these months and years of hard work that you've been doing. And I can't really think of anything else that's like that. So we're in a unique position as musicians to just kind of have to sift through all of this dirt to eventually find some little piece of gold in there. What do you think? Is this something that you think about? Is it something that you try to do in the practice room? Is this frustration that I'm talking about something that you go through on a weekly or daily basis? Let me know. Join up with our 10-Minute Jazz Lesson Community Facebook group, and this is where we start all these discussions like this. And uh, I really, really love talking to you guys about topics such as this because it's something that we can kind of all come together around and either vent or give each other advice. And I find that those are some of the best ways to go about things, coming together as a community. So go join up with that group and let's, let's talk about it. All right, I hope you have an awesome week. We'll be coming at you on Friday with a brand new episode. And uh, stay inspired, stay practicing, keep searching for that gold. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye.